Hi, Tony here at Views from the Man Cave and today I'm going to be fitting a Senna Bluetooth communication kit to a couple of retro styled helmets. Now Senna have a huge range of devices, uh, Bluetooth units, cameras, bits for GoPros, all sorts. But I wanted to look at their offering from a point of view of those people, including myself, that like to wear retro styled helmets as well as modern day helmets. And I was interested to see how these units fitted and if there were any particular units that um, suited them more than others. Now there's a couple of units I think would work well that are on the smaller side. Although they're quite small in stature, they're not small in features. There's two units I considered, the 10S and the 10R. I plump for the 10S, although bigger than the 10R, uh, it's all combined in one unit. The 10R has a much smaller, slimmer control that sticks to the side of the helmet, but it does have a secondary battery pack uh, that needs to mount to the back. I thought this was potentially neater being all one single unit. I intend to fit and test this unit with a couple of helmets. I'll start with the trusty Shoei JO, and that'll give me the opportunity to test and use the boom mic. And as this is such a popular helmet, I thought we'll try this with the bell bullet as well. This will give you an indication of how well it fits. And obviously we can try to get a difference in the sound by having the wired microphone with a visor. An obvious place to start is to show you what is in the box. And here we go. So here is the unit itself. That is the clamp that goes to the helmet, the boom mic, and the high definition earpieces. Delve a little further, there's your book with your uh, setup and your quick start guide and everything that's in there that you need. Then lower down in the box you've got a big bag of goodies. There's an alternative stick on mount, got the wired mic, we have some extra cabling, we've got a number of different uh, ear pads and sticky velcro bits and some other foam pads as well. So there's a whole host of the fitting kit. In the other side we have a 12 volt charger and we also have the USB cable. So there's everything in here that you need. And the good thing is with Senna is that all of these additional parts can be bought as spare parts or extra parts. So let's have a little talk about the 10S. So it's a Bluetooth 4.1, which is very stable. And this unit does have a range of one mile or 1.6 kilometers. Four riders talking on this at the same time. It's universal Bluetooth as well. So that means it will work with any other device. This also has voice prompts. So you can actually voice prompt it to do bits and pieces and there is a built-in FM radio the talk time on this from fully charged is 12 hours uh, and it has a 10 day standby and it's like this weighs only 58 grams I think it offers a really good range of features comparable to its size and price. So we'll start by mounting the holder itself. Now, as you saw in the packet, there's a couple of options. It comes with this clamp. So all you do with this clamp is loosen that off. That will slide up the gap in the side of a helmet. So you can slide that up. Once you've got that in a position, it's then just a case of tightening up those two Allen keys. So there's rubber backing in behind here and on the inside here so that's not going to damage the helmet in any way and you don't have to do that super tight you just need to make sure that you've got it firmly on there so now this is on i can show you how the unit fits you can see you've got the pins on here to match up so it's a case of slotting that tab in the bottom and then it just clicks and snaps on and there you go you can see from the front doesn't really stick out too much and once that's mounted actually the rest of it is fairly straightforward you've got this red plug here is your microphone mount depending on which one of those you want to use then you've got a short plug for this here and obviously a longer wire that runs around to the others and the reason that I mounted it here is that gives me that natural break in this cheek pad to be able to run the cables down and hide them underneath the lining for this helmet with the recess I've got a sticky velcro pad that will then velcro onto the rough plastic on the back of the earphone and then I've got the little foam cover just to give you a little bit of comfort on your ears. I'm going to run these cables down this gap here just run that cable under the lining and then we've got the short wire which again will just run into that section and I've just stuck that pad into that section there you go with the foam protector on it just to give it a little bit more comfort it's then just a case of plugging it in and there is just a little 
guide on the plug to make sure you get that around the right way cheek pad in and the earpiece so i'll do the same on the other side now once they're in place you might just want to then try the helmet on a couple of times to move them around to get them into the optimal position and i think for me they're going to be fine so the next job then is to mount the microphone now as i'm running the boom mic there is a small recess that runs along the back of this so you can just loosen the mount off put the plug through there so that's nice and neat the back of the boom mic again has got this velcro element to it and in the box there are a number of pads i'm going to sacrifice my we ride london sticker but i'm going to just stick this in place there it's probably best to stick it directly to the helmet and not over the top of another sticker but i think that's going to be fine uh, for these purposes and then it's just the case of mounting your boom mic and there you go that's uh, a pretty solid fix by the time you mount this unit on top that's just going to help hold that in place and stop that from coming loose then it's just the case of plugging those wires in and you can see there i've tapped that away switch the device on is very simple you've got a button at the back here and a button here you hold those together you'll get a beep and then you should hear a voice command saying hello and there we go now to pair this to a device you have to hold this button in for five seconds phone and we're going to phone pairing mode if the phone rings you just hit this button at the back or you tap this button here or indeed you just say hello you can adjust the volume by turning this jog dial and to end the call you just click again this or this for two seconds if you've got a call coming you don't want to answer it press and hold this for two seconds and that will reject the call to test this what i'm going to use is my trusty gopro and i have brought one of the center gp10 so this is a, a very clever little unit it hooks onto the back of your gopro you have this little connector that connects the two that means now that you've got a direct Bluetooth connection to your GoPro. So this is great if you want to do some moto vlogging. You can connect to this and you've got the audio recording straight onto your video. So let's talk you through it. There you go, 30 miles an hour. 40. 50. 60. And I expect there are going to be some limitations on the boom microphone. If we go back to the village we should get a pretty good idea of the sound uh, at low speed uh, without too much wind noise. Now I'm going to test this out with the phone call as well but obviously I can't show you that in the video so you'll have to take my word for the clarity of that. But we'll give that a go. Okay so turning to the bell bullet uh, you can mount it the same way so it will mount between the lining and the shell itself using the same bolt. There is an alternative in the box you have a different mount and this has got a 3M sticky pad so if you wanted to you could stick that on the helmet and then screw the rest of this mount on. Now the major difficulty you have with the bell as opposed to other helmets is this cuff that goes around the inside so when you're feeding these cables in if you were to tuck those in behind there they're going to be behind a lining in the helmet itself so you've got no other choice really than to have those going across that section there is one advantage on the bell bullet to some of the others if you pop the cheek pads out the cheek pad actually has a little pocket for an earpiece there is also a rear a recess in the eps liner in here what this means is you can just with that earpiece with the foam on you can tuck it into that little pocket you don't need to velcro it in it'll stay where it is so the process is exactly the same it's just a case of pulling these wires through under the skull cap of the lining the only difference is with this helmet i'm going to use the stick on wired mic now i could put it somewhere up here at the front of the chin bar but i don't have a lot of space between my chin and this bar so i'm going to try it just down on the side here and then obviously i can run the cabling behind the cheek pad so if you pull the cheek pad out you can run these cables down so they sit in front of the first popper that stops them from sliding to the back that's all ready to go uh, let's give it a try okay so the camera now should be connected and uh Pooping along with the visor open and at the same speed with the visor closed. It'll be interesting to see if this is more echoey. It sounds more echoey. I just put the camera on me so you can see the profile of the headset and um, we're up to 60 miles an hour. It'll be interesting to see how much of the wind noise gets picked up that comes underneath this helmet. Obviously, with a bell bullet, 
you haven't got a chin guard that sits underneath so positioning the microphone on the left hand side here keeps it away from being so close to my face at the front but it might create other problems um, and then we'll see if that makes any difference again I've slowed down to 50 miles an hour but with the visor up so I think you agree if you look at it from this side uh, it's quite uh, quite low profile I wouldn't know it was on there, I can't hear anything from that side, I can't hear any extra wind noise, I can't feel any buffeting or anything like that. You should still be able to hear me and let's hope the battery lasts if I do a run down here. And it'd be interesting to see how far you can still hear me on that camera. So I'm still talking now, I've got... Uh, So we did lose connection and then we'll do a fly past. So what do I think of the Senna 10S? Well it's easy to fit, it's easy to use. As you can hear the sound quality is good whether you're using the boom microphone or the wired microphone. Obviously I couldn't demonstrate the call quality in this video but it was crystal clear. I have to say the quality was exceptional both from the point of view of me and the other person. So a really really good piece of kit. I think it's priced competitively. You can buy it in a single unit or you can buy a pack with two of these in so you're ready to go with a pillion or with one of your mates. One thing I didn't cover off in a video is the Senna app. Uh, now this gives you a lot of functionality, it makes it easy to set up connects, you can control bits and pieces, you can set the presets for your FM radio, you can put your speed dial telephone numbers in there, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with that app, very very useful. Senna also make a handlebar remote control which can be used with this unit so you can get the controls on your bar if you prefer to do that and have something visual than trying to feel around on the side of your helmet. As usual I'll put a link up here in the top corner that uh, will take you away to the the Senna website where you can go and have a look at more of their good stuff and there will be a subscribe button in the end credits and I think I've got a little man cave logo down here for you to click on and subscribe I would love you to do that and until next time all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching take care ride safe and I'll see you soon bye